Morning. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, the songs were just a blessing to my heart because it's just come confirmation to to what's on my heart about the simplicity that we have in Christ. You know, and as Baron shared while he was leading the songs, you know, as simple as it is for a Sunday school child to understand. Okay? That's how simple the gospel really is. Is that Jesus loves me. And Jesus loves me not like this world loves, but it's just empty words. But Jesus actually demonstrated his love. And that while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. Okay? You know, it's easy to love those that love you. But to love your enemies is another story. And while we were you know, Jesus' enemies, we wanted nothing to do with it. You know, he went, to, he went to the cross for us and he died for us. And I just want to say this morning, um, I was blessed by what Dave shared the other day. And I just want to like, share some of the <laughs> sentiments that, you know, we are nervous when we share because it's not that, uh, just nervous for the sake of nervous. I was never any good in any way at speaking in front of people. But it's because we're having the Word of God that, you know, it's an awesome responsibility. We don't want to say anything of our own thoughts, our own opinions, or our own what we think. But we just want, you know, to, to share what the Lord thinks. And His Word. That's what's important. And, you know, this, I'm just going to share something small today that really gripped my heart. And I'm not, um, I also want to say that it's not directed at, at anybody. If it's directed at anybody, like, like Dave said, it's directed at me first. Because this yeah, shook me to the core when I read this. And, you know, I'll start off with in the book of Revelation. And I'm not going to tell you where, where it is yet. Because, you know, there's the seven churches and that was the Lord Jesus speaking. The, we know that John had the revelation when the Lord Jesus appeared to him. And he was saying to write his letters to the seven churches. And you know, um, there were some good things about the churches and there were some bad things about the churches. And the, the, the first one, uh, I'm just going to read it, it says, I know your works, he was writing to the one church, I know your labor. Right? I know your patience and how, how you cannot bear evil, them which are evil. And now you have tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and you found them liars. And then it says, and you have born. Now that word born, I didn't really understand it, so I looked it up. It says, it's basically to endure, to carry, carry a burden, to, to, to endure. And you have patience. For my name's sake, and remember this is the Lord Jesus speaking to them. For my name's sake, you have labored and you've not fainted. So up to here, like what an upstanding church. What a good church. Could, could you fault them from just what you've heard so far? No, I certainly couldn't because of everything I read there. You know, they, they've got works, they, they labor, they have patience. They cannot bear them which are evil, you know, so they shun evil, that's good. And they've tried them which say they are apostles and have they found them liars. So they, they're not just taking what they hear, they, they, you know, as, as Paul said to the Bereans, to go and study the scriptures for yourself. So they found those false preachers to be false preachers, all good so far. You know, they, they, they're enduring, they've got patience, and for Jesus' name's sake, They've labored and are not fainted. It sounds like a very good church, eh? But then it goes on to, to say, Never, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. And when I read this, I thought, Wow, Lord. That's scary. Because, in a sense, what, what is our first love? And this morning we sang it, you know. Jesus loves me. The simplicity of the gospel. 
you know, the Bible says that, uh, I think it was Paul speaking, when he said, I fear lest, as the serpent beguiled Eve, you should be deceived from, from the simplicity of the gospel. You know? It's all about the Lord Jesus, it's about Him that loved us. But the thing, what, what, what happens is, you know, we're born again into God's family. And it can become something that's about labor and about works. And about, you know, doing all the right things. Doing the right things. Being in church is the right thing. Having works is the right thing. Somebody doing it in the Lord Jesus' name is the right thing. Hey, right? but um, are we doing it because we're doing the right thing? Or are we doing it because we love the Lord Jesus? And that's a challenge in our heart, really. Because it's so easy to slip into religion. Where we're just doing it because this is what we do on a Sunday. Every Sunday I come here because this is what I'm used to doing. Hey, Tuesday night I go to prayer meeting because it's what I'm used to doing. Thursday night I go to Bible study because it's what I'm used to doing. Every single meeting we can mention. Or am I doing it because I love the Lord Jesus? Because He loved me first. And like I said this morning, I'm not saying this out of condemnation. It's just really a challenge to me to, to examine my own heart that I don't fall into the trap of religion. And Lord, if I have, I'm the first one to say, please, Lord, forgive me. Because it's not about, you know, what it's about is what Jesus did for me on the cross 2,000 years ago. You know, everything else, the works are wonderful. Everything is wonderful. But in the proper context, in the proper place, you know, um, he says you left your first love. And our first love should always be the Lord Jesus himself. Everything else must find their place, slot it in beneath the Lord Jesus. But the Lord Jesus must have preeminence in our life um, at all time. And he says here, because you have left your first love, he says, remember therefore from whence you have fallen and repent. And do the first works, or else I will come to thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Right? Now, if you had to read this, okay, fine, that's them. He's just writing to them. But he goes on to say, uh, He that has an ear, hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So yes, the letter, the letter was written to those churches. But then he says, whoever hears this after this, even us today, we've got an ear to hear. Hear what the Spirit, what, and then what Spirit, we, we said there, who's writing the letter. It was uh, John. But, but Jesus was, was telling him what to write. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Um, this is the Lord Jesus himself speaking um, whoever, to whoever has an ear to hear. And that's us. Yeah? Use them as an example, but this is written directly to us. And there's so many places in the Word of God, or especially in the book of Revelation, where he says, He that has an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And it's almost like putting emphasis on that portion of the Word. Like, listen up. Or, 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 you know, there's a couple of places. One is when, when he says about the mark of the beast. He says, all, he calls all, both great and small, to receive a mark in the hand and forehead. And then he goes on to say, that him that understands, yeah, he's putting emphasis, like a saying to us, don't be here for that, because nobody will be able to stand for that. And, you know, I'm going to go down that road straight away, but let, let's do, just to mention it. You know, a lot of, I've heard a lot of people saying, I used to think like this before I knew the Lord Jesus. I used to think, okay, fine, I might miss the rapture, but if I'm here after the rapture during the seven day tribulation, you know, when they bring, start bringing up the mark of the beast, duh, I'm not going to take it because that means you, you're swearing allegiance to, to Satan himself. I'm not that stupid. But then you, you look at this world now. And how many people with this conditions we're living in now are serving God? 
Okay? How difficult it is in this day and age to serve Jesus, to serve the Lord. It's almost impossible already. And many, you know, the, the, the Bible speaks about the spirit of Antichrist. And we see it. You see the darkness everywhere you look, taking over almost in the sense. And the Bible says it's just him that let it will let. It's the Holy Spirit that holds back. And I can say it this way, all the hell from breaking loose on this, on, on this earth. It's the Holy Spirit still holding back all evil. But when the Holy Spirit is taken, and, 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 and you know, that, that's when the rapture takes place, where the, where the Lord comes to take His bride, and takes His church home, all the hell will break loose on this earth. And if people can't serve the Lord now, while there's the Holy Spirit to convict them of their sin, how are they going to do it by themselves in the seven year tribulation? It's impossible. And that's why that verse says, all. He causes all, both great, small, rich, poor. He goes on to explain it so that you don't, um, bond or free, so that you can't exclude any class. Uh, you know, rich or poor, bond or free, you either a free man when you're rich or you, you're working as a bond person. You know, every category of people is mentioned there. And then he says to us, listen up, hear what the Spirit saying to the churches. And you know, it's, it's, what it's about is just, like we said, it's about having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Himself. Not being a church, good church goer. Not being a pure woman, as we heard a few weeks ago. Hey, it's so easy to become a pure woman. But Lord, help us. Give us a heart to love you. Not for what you can do for us, but because of who you are. Man, you know, we fall in love with Jesus because of what he did on the cross for us. I remember the first time when the penny really dropped, and I actually realized, oh, this is what it's about. And this is what, what Jesus actually went and did for me. I know, as I say this, I'm sure a lot of you stir back to a, like a thought in your mind. When, you, when the penny actually dropped, this is what they've been saying all along, but I was blind to it. And then the scales fall from your eyes. And you realize, man, how could I have missed it? <laughs> this one, it's about Jesus loved me so much that he went and died on the cross for me. Mm -hmm. While I was his enemy, he loved me and he gave himself for me. And you know, if you're in a relationship with somebody, you'll know it. <laughs> Many people, if you ask them, are you going to hear it when you die? You know, the, I've, I've heard people say, I hope so, I think so. But if you had to ask somebody if they're married, would you get that kind of response? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> or the last time I checked, no, it doesn't work like it. You know? If you had to ask my wife if she's married to me, she'll say, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> no, no. Hopefully, she won't say that. She'll say, yes, of course I <laughs> Um, but she'll know, whether good or bad, she'll know she's in a relationship with me. You know? And that goes for any relationship. If you've got in a good, healthy relationship with somebody, you'll know it. If your relationship has gone cold, maybe, you know, a lot of us have friends from school, and at one stage you were such a close friend, you know, knew each other's favorite color, favorite sport, favorite everything, you were like inseparable. And then your life goes a different direction. And can you really still say that you know that person? You know, you might know some things about them, and, but you don't, you know, like that anymore with them. You're not in a relationship. And man, that's what relationship is all about. The relationship we have with the Lord Jesus. And yes, the works are good. Like, where are we going to be in a relationship with the Lord Jesus? With His family, in the body of Christ. In prayer, spending time in His Word, and spending time in fellowship with Him. You know, so all these things, it's not bad things to go to church, obviously not. Right? It's not any of those things that, that, that the Lord listed there. They, these were good things, man. They were shunning evil, which the Bible commands us to do. You know, all the, 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 the good things they were doing, but here's the thing, they left their first love. And it's just a challenge, Lord, help me 
not to do the things I do for any other reason but that I love you. And out of a response of what you did for me. And I cannot even say, I cannot even boast in the fact that I love him because it's his love that he's given me that I love him back with. Because if it was dependent on my own love, I'd have fallen out of the race long ago. So, 1 Peter 4 says, If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? That's just a, a, a scary verse. The, the righteous will scarcely be saved. And I'm not saying these things now this morning to, to make us fear or make us, wow, well, you know, I'm not scarcely going to be saved. I'm not going to make it. It's just really to also examine your heart, to raise your heart. Where's your relationship with the Lord? Where's my relationship with the Lord? You know, at one time we were best friends, and we're still best friends. Mm. Have we gone another path? Mm. And where will the ungodly and sinner appear? Then there's an account here the rich young ruler that we heard of late. I think in the week somebody shared on it. It's something that just really touched me. This ruler came and asked Jesus, Good Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What thing must I do? <laughs> do, do, do. So as long as I can be doing stuff, then surely I must be right. Surely if I just keep busy, I'm in the right place. What can I do? And firstly, Jesus says to him, Why do you call me good? You know? None is good, save one that is God. Right? And we know that the Lord Jesus himself is God in the flesh, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So he says to him, Thou knowest the commandments don't commit adultery, don't kill, don't steal, don't bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And he said, These have I kept from my youth up. Mm. That's almost like, Yeah, that's me. <laughs> For everything you mentioned so far, that's me. I don't know if it was really the case or it was maybe just his perception of himself. Because, you know, if you, has everybody always honored their mother and their father? <laughs> I wish I could have said that. But we all. You know, you can go through all of the commandments. All of us have at one stage lied, even if it was just a white lie. <laughs> Stolen, if, even if it was just a few cents, or a sweet, or whatever. Taking something that doesn't belong to us. But then, he says, when Jesus heard these things, he said to them, said to him, it's almost like the Lord bared with him, okay? You're stating your case, but I'll bear with you. He says, yet you lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Now, if you only look at the first part, take everything you have and sell it. And if it, if it was only that that would make him, make him righteous, then it would be a work, just like any other work. We know that we cannot be made righteous by works. Right? What he was saying to him here is, come and follow me. Now, there was the key thing. Everything that you own, everything that's in your life, make it secondary or solid. Come and follow me. Make me number one. Make me your first love. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. When Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? So for, for, it's easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Then they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And right, rightfully so. Even anybody could say, Who can then be saved? Wow. If this is truly the requirement, you know, who can be saved? But thank God that, that it's not um, dependent on us or how faithful we've been, or how, and that's about what the Lord Jesus did on the cross. And then we 
decide to put everything secondary and follow Him with all of our hearts. And he said, he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. In your own strength, and I tell you this this morning, that it's impossible to put the Lord Jesus, number one in your life, above everything else. Even above your own family or spouse or friends or whoever, in your own strength it's impossible. But in his strength it is. You know, if you just make that decision to say, Lord, I don't know how this works, but I definitely don't want you to say to me that you're disappointed in me that I've left my first love. You know, there's other churches that he, that he, that he was pleased with. And things weren't going so well for them. They were in distress. They were facing persecution. And I don't want to get too much into that, but we see that at, at large in the world. And you know, the one thing I was just thinking about we're just serving God because it's the right thing to do. If you want to just do the right thing, get a TV license. <laughs> you see that ad when we say, it's the right thing to do, TV license for you know? I'm sure there's not one person in the Middle East being beheaded because it's the right thing to do. You know? No, it's because they love Jesus, they love God. And therefore they are willing to not deny their faith. Now we're living in a day and age where people are being martyred for their faith more than any time in history. They say in certain places the Christians have almost been completely wiped out. In these places in Nigeria, China, all over, where we, the, these guys are facing horrendous persecution. China's busy rewriting the Bible um, to, to line up with their way of thinking, the government's way of thinking. They're tearing down crosses, burning down churches. Perilous times that we live in. But I can tell you one thing, not, not one of them are standing because it's a right thing to do. Because they love Jesus. And you know, if that day has to come, yeah, we, we, you know, we can say many things about our country. You know, the corruption and this and this. But at least we still have religious freedom and liberty over here. We can so, still serve God. Um, our choice, or, or, or how can I say this? We still have the liberty to serve and open like this. Mm. You know, in most places, North Korea, mm. if you, <laughs> I think I've shared on this before, but, uh, but I'll share on this again. Because uh, it broke my heart when I read this. There was, a, there was a family that the little girl, I think she was in grade four at the time, and the, the teacher suspected there's something different about this girl, and she suspected that her parents are Christians. So she sent that little girl on a special mission to go and find a special book in their house. And she went and she found this book, the Bible, obviously the Bible, and the teacher said, don't tell your parents. The next day she came and, you know, brought this book to the school, and she was rewarded by the school they had, and asked party for it at the school. When she went home, the parents were gone. So, who knows what happened? This was one of the stories from Open Doors. And if you guys have heard of Open Doors before, they smuggle Bibles into countries and they visit this, these persecuted places. But who knows if that girl was ever reunited, reunited ever again with, with her parents? They say, and, and also in North Korea, you only swear allegiance to as a kingdom on and, and that uh, imperial family. If you're a Christian, they either put you in a labor camp. Well, they kill you for your faith. It's so risky that you don't even tell your spouse that you're a Christian. Right? Now, if you're living there, you know, it would be easy to, to, to sift out the, the wheat from the tears in the sense, do you love Jesus or not? Yes, I love Jesus. Labor camp, uh, or do you love Jesus? <laughs> Off with your head. But where we have it easy, it's more dangerous for us, I believe, in this day and age. Because it's more easily, or it's more easy for us to slip into religion and um, become pure warmers in that sense. You know, even the early church in the book of Acts, when the church was persecuted, the church spread like wildfire. Right? Because wherever they went, they couldn't keep silent. 
You know, in one place the disciples, they, they, they commanded them that they don't, they don't anymore speak in the name of Jesus. They said, whether it's more important for us to listen to God or you, you be the judge. But we cannot help but speak of the things which we've seen, which we've heard, what we've experienced. Because they just, we're just our witness of what they've seen, what the Lord was doing at the time. And you know, 1 Corinthians 13 speaks about love. It says here, yeah, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I don't have charity, charity which is love, and not just any kind of love, but God's love, I become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And what is a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal? It's an instrument that just makes a lot of noise. <laughs> right? I, can, I can speak a lot of things, but it's a, it's a lot of noise. If I have the gift of prophecy, and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge. Imagine, wouldn't you like to understand every single mystery of the Bible? Imagine that, right? And, and have all knowledge. If I don't have faith, no, sorry, sorry, that I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains. Imagine having that faith, walking around, moving mountains all over the show, doing all these great and wonderful things. If I have not charity, I am nothing. If I don't have the love of Jesus in my heart, if I'm not made perfect by His love, everything else, as we heard this morning in the morning meeting, uh, was it the Song of Solomon? Ecclesiastes. Sorry, Ecclesiastes. All is vanity. There's nothing new under the sun. Everything is vanity. Here today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> There's a time to be born, a time to die. In between, what are you going to do? Study a bit? get a degree, work, get to some level of something in this world, is that going to last? <laughs> is any of your achievements, your trophies, your anything going to last? It will become somebody else's or it will land up on a rubbish heap or something. And just as quick as you came into this world, just as quick you'll, you know, you'll leave this world with nothing. Bring nothing in and you take nothing with you. And And then he says, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and yet back to that rich young ruler, you know, even if he went and did that, if he went and sold all his goods, but he didn't follow Jesus, mm. it wouldn't be good enough. That wasn't a requirement just to get rid of your stuff. Because then it would be a work that we can do and say, Lord, now check, <laughs> there's the box ticked, and it's just another commandment which I could do. It says, even if I've done that, I've bestowed all my goods to feed the poor, and even give my body to be burnt. How's that? I wouldn't easily be able to give my body to be burnt. Eh? But even if you had to go that far as to do that big work to give your body to be burnt, but you don't have charity, it doesn't profit you anything, it doesn't help you. And then it goes on to describe charity or, or, or the love of God, the love of Jesus. It suffers long. It's kind. Charity envy is not. It forms not itself. It's not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemly. It doesn't seek her own. It's not easily provoked. Thinks no evil. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Charity never fails. I love that part because if we look at the Lord Jesus going to the cross, there was no way he could fail. Okay? He had set his heart on us. <laughs> for the, it says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the shame, he endured the mocking and the shame of the cross for us. And that, what was that joy that was set before? It's you and I. We can be in a relationship with Him. That sin could be dealt with. <laughs> the keeping of the law, where everybody was just, uh, I mean, condemned by. Because nobody could live up to the law. Although the rich and ruler thought he could. He would have got a surprise on Judgment Day if that was all. If that was his resume, if I could say it that way. 
or his claim to heaven. If he, could, if he stood before God, God said, why should I let you into heaven? I've kept the commandments. And God opened the books. So it says in Revelation 20, the great white throne Jacob, it's the great white throne books will be opened. And whoever's name doesn't appear in the Lamb's Book of Life, they will be judged out of the many books. And there must be like a huge library. Imagine all the books that contains the deeds of every single man that has lived. I mean, it's over 6,000 years now. There must be some big library there. And for those whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, so it's so easy. You know, have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You're made perfect by the love of Jesus. Then your name, you will not uh, you know, be judged at the Great White Throne Judgment. We've been hearing it in our Bible studies of that. And if you remember when we did the first principles. But eternal judgment. And we'll escape the Great White Throne Judgment. Because if you ever heard the term double jeopardy, if you get punished for a crime twice, you can't get punished for a crime twice. You know? And it's because the Lord Jesus died on the cross for us that we, you know, we will miss the great white throne judgment. And then it says here in Matthew 24, Matthew 24, the, the disciples asked the Lord Jesus about the end days, what, what it will be like in the last days. And he said, the Lord Jesus said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And you know, we're living in a day and age where, especially with technology, with these things here, that everybody has heard the gospel far and wide, even in the poorest village, wherever you can think people have got, these things are getting so cheap these days. You get a color screen, a very basic uh, phone for, for cheap, where people are, have access to the gospel. Missionaries have gone out to preach the gospel with all the ends of the world. And he says here, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So, you know, if you follow the news, that some Christian have fallen away from, from especially of late, the last few months they've been some well-known Christian authors or Christian people that have fallen away from the faith. Mm. And can you say that their love is wax cold? Mm. And you know that it can be an easy thing that can happen to anybody. The, the Lord says that he that think that he stands, take heed lest he should fall. If we don't have our first love, if we're not doing it for the right reason, do it and they serve God because we love Jesus in a response that he loved us first. We could easily fall into that trap. First, become a, becoming a pure warmer, and then, when really, when the tacky hits the tall one day, when, it, when I'm faced with a choice, imagine that had to happen overnight here. When you face a choice, either deny Jesus or off with your head. Right? And we are told many places in the Word of God that he that will endure to the end will be saved. Okay? Especially in the Revelation also, which speaks about the different churches and the things people will go through. He says, but he that will endure to the end shall be saved. So, there's a definite also responsibility on us. And a lot of people believe in once saved, always saved. You just make a once upon a lifetime decision and then you sort it for the rest of your life. You can live however you like and still go to heaven. That's not love. That's not being in a relationship with someone. Like I, I used my wife as an example earlier. If I only told her I love, love her when we got married, but the rest of our life, <laughs> marriage together, I've never spent any time with her. I never would we really love one another? Would, would there be a relationship? Would there be, if I lived in a far country and I never saw her, We'd be back, a piece of paper would say we're married, but can I really say that I love her? Love is a relationship. And it's no different with a relationship with God. You know, I want to end with this. And 
uh, this is confirmation of the breaking of bread, the songs, the everything today. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm so excited. But everything is about Jesus. You know, the resurrection is not an event. It's a person. Jesus said, you know, the Jews for, for all those years, while well, they were trying to be so religious and doing all the works, they were looking forward to the resurrection as an event. But Jesus said to Martha, when, when, when Lazarus was raised from the dead, Jesus said to, to, to Martha, Martha, I am the resurrection. Mm. Hey? It's not an event, it's a person. It's a relationship. Life eternal is not a thing. It's a person. We heard this morning, John 17, verse 3. We'll go there quickly. This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Because if you don't know Jesus Christ, you cannot know God. So Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. It's the only way. So, Jesus is the re resurrection. He is the eternal life. Um, 2 Timothy 2 verse 1 says, My son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Even the grace that we have is in Christ Jesus. I call it Mark Short, shared on Bible studies on Thursday night with us. That God's grace keeps us. And even that grace towards you and me <laughs> is the person of Jesus Christ. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman. And <laughs> Romans 8. 38. Or let's read from 37. It says, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Again, through Jesus that loved us. Mm -hmm. Then it says here, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Now I've seen that as a Bible sticker end there. And it's like so sad because it misses the whole point. Mm. The last part of that verse says, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm. Now outside of the person of Jesus Christ, it's only God's wrath that abides on people. Mm. Okay? It's waiting for that judgment that we've spoken about. The great, great white throne judgment which nobody will escape. Mm. But in Christ Jesus, in Jesus himself, we have um, the love of God and we can partake of the love of God. Mm which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If, if, uh, we used this example before. If you had to take the love of God, and I say this with, with respect, you had to pour the love of God into a cup. Every single drop of God is love in a cup. And outside of the cup is not get God's love, it's only in that cup. That cup is the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus himself, God's love. So, some other things on my note here, but I think let's leave it at that this morning. That everything that God wants for you and me is found in a relationship with Jesus Christ, His Son. Not a religion, not a set of rules. Imagine that being set free from a bunch of rules to be now in another set of rules. Because we were held bondage by the Lord, the commandments which nobody could fulfill. Nobody could live a life without lying, stealing, doing all that the law required. Now imagine now being in a new set of law, rules, and um, <laughs> trying to be a good church goer, and a good this and a good that. It's only a relationship with the Lord Jesus that will keep us. The first love, my first love for the Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Father. Father, thank you 
so much for your word this morning, Father. Um, Father, I really pray, Lord, that as we would um, enjoy some time of fellowship afterwards and then go our separate ways, Father, I pray that we would not easily forget the word that you shared with us this morning, Father. Uh, Father, maybe for some of us, uh, folk would be thinking, oh, I know this stuff. Maybe others would be thinking, wow, I needed to hear this this morning. But, Father, the truth is that if you would have seen fit, you have seen that it's good to share the things that you have shared with us this morning, it means every single one of us need to hear what you said this morning, Father. And that means every one of us needs to take it to heart. And so, Father, I pray, Lord, that if we would go our separate ways later on, we would not easily forget it, Father. But, Father, we would go and we would make time to spend with you, even as we've heard about having a relationship with you. We would go and make time to spend with you and to further wait upon you um, so that you can take these things that you've spoken to us about this morning and speak to us about it more, Father, so that we would have understanding of it, Father, so that we can uh, obey you and follow you in those things, Father. Lord, it's so important for us to have this uh, relationship with you, Father. Um, how easily we plan for so many things in our life, Father. We plan for our education, we plan for our careers, we plan for uh, our wedding, we plan for our kids, we plan for retirement, we, we plan for so many different things. But Father, the most important thing that we should be planning for is for our eternity. Mm -hmm. And the way we plan for our eternity is by making sure we are in the right place with you, our relationship with you is firm and steadfast. And so Lord, I pray with all my heart, Lord, let us take these things to heart this morning and let us go away and let us further wait upon you and speak to you about these things, Father, so that we can be sure that our relationship with you is in the right place, so that we can be sure that we have not left our first love, Father. Lord, that is so, so important. That is us preparing for our eternity. We want to be in a place where we are absolutely head over heels in love with you. We are in a our first love is close to us, Lord. Yeah. Our relationship with you is right. Just as we strive to have our relationship with our wives or our husbands in the right place, even more so we want to strive to have our relationship with you in the right place. When we consider what it is that you've done for us, that we can have a relationship with you. Father, heaven is glorious, but the most precious person, the most precious gift in the whole glories of heaven is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You took him and you brought him to this wretched earth so that people like us, sinners, people who are enemies to you, might know your salvation, might know your grace, might know your love, so that we can have a relationship with you. Let us not take these things lightly this morning, Father, but let us go home and make sure we're on the right place with you. Thank you for speaking to us this way, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word, Father. Thank you that we have the privilege of been able to have a relationship with you, even as was upon my heart this morning, Father. It's incredible when I think of, of myself as a person to think that I'm able to know you, the creator of heaven and earth. I'm able to know Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Savior of the world. Lord, that's an incredible thing. But we have to make sure we are in that place where we know you and our relationship is right with you. And so, Lord, let us take it to heart. Um, and let us make sure, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for this time. Uh, bless our fellowship together here as we would uh, have some fellowship together, Lord, and as we would go our separate ways. Keep us close to you, we pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.